Hi everyone, it's me, West Coast Mom, and today we're going to do five really easy borders. Now, borders are great to be used on blankets, on clothing, what have you. It adds a nice finishing touch. It makes your garment or item look more finished. It frames it nicely, and it can also stabilize your item as well. Today's borders are really easy, and they all involve single crochet and or variations on that. Uh, and so they're really easy to do. Um, what I'm going to use as a swatch here is just a simple C to C square, but like I said, these borders are good on any blanket or any garment, um, like sweaters and things like that. So on my C to C square, I have done the small swatch, and then I've done a foundation row, which if you're interested in, I have a separate video on that. That just gives a nice basis. Uh, for you to do your border and then on top of that foundation row I have done a single crochet border around in the white just contrasting just so that you can see it a little bit better. I'm just going to show you the techniques obviously colors and things like that are up to you but this is the basis that we're starting on all right so let's get started. Okay, our first border is the moss stitch or the granite stitch, and it looks really nice when you have contrasting colors. It kind of looks like an internal sort of scallop, and really all it is is I'm single crocheting in every other stitch, and they're separated by a chain one. So that's how it looks, like I said. Let me show you how you do this here. So. I'm going to single crochet, I'm gonna skip a stitch, single crochet in the next one after that, then I'm going to chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet in the next one, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet in the next one, chain one. And you just go all the way along. And don't forget when you get to the corners, you have you should single crochet three in the quarter just to make that ease so that the corner is nicely done. And uh, like I said, it's a really nice sort of simple, it's flat and it's easy and it adds a really nice border. All right, next is the reverse or the crab stitch and it looks like this and it's kind of neat. It actually seems almost kind of hard and it kind of it's kind of 3D-ish. It's almost like a, a corded edge um, and you do this on top of a single crochet as well. So this is how you do it. Basically you're doing single crochets but we typically work right to left but I'm going backwards and sort so it kind of twists it. So I'm going backwards. I'm going to put my crochet hook in yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the two. So I am going backwards. I find personally the trick with this is to um, not have your tension too tight because otherwise it, it's really difficult to pull through. So if anything, I need to sort of crochet a little bit looser to get through. And, uh, and it creates that sort of twisted, sort of neat look border, which would work nice in a solid color, but here with two contrasting colors, it looks nice as well. Same thing in the corner, I did it three times just to add the E so that, that my corner sits flat. So that is the uh, crab stitch or the reverse stitch. Okay, next we have what's called the blanket stitch. Now the blanket stitch is characterized by these long single crochets, which are called spike stitches. They're like single crochets, but you go in deeper. And so in order to accommodate this, I've added an extra row of white single crochets. Uh, before you've been seeing me work with just a single row of white single crochets that I've gone around, I added a second row because you'd need this sort of depth so that the spike stitches so th show through. Also, I find that this works best with two contrasting yarns, not all the same, so that you can actually see these spike stitches. Uh, if it's all the same color yarn, then you're not going to really notice it, so what's the point? Alright, so how do you do a spike stitch? Like I said, it's like a weird sort of single crochet. Normally I would go into the two loops at the top there, but instead I'm going to elongate it. I'm going to go way down, let's see, where should I go, I'm going to way down here and I'm going to pull my yarn through. Now make sure the yarn is long. Uh, you don't want it to be tight because then it bunches up the white part and then it looks kind of funny. Right, so you keep it long and then you 
it's like a single crochet. And then you do two single crochets. And then I'm gonna go long again down here. Now, technically, instead of going into those two loops, I went down low. So make sure you don't single crochet in those two loops because uh, you went down there instead of, right? And then two single crochets. All right, so it's really easy. Uh, what I've done in the corner is for my three stitches, I made the uh, middle one to be the spike. And uh, that's just how I did it. You don't have to do it that way. Like I said, you could play around with this. You can make the white part thicker. You can make the spikes uh, longer. I could have gone all the way down to the bottom or if the white is thicker, you could make them longer. Uh, you can play around with the distance in between, make them closer, make them further apart. There's lots of different things that you can do with this. This really reminds me of quilting. On my sewing machine, I actually have this stitch that I can do. Uh, you see this on scarves a lot, so this is a great border that is really simple. Again, it's just single crochet and some variations on it, um, but it looks really nice. All right, next up is the pico border. These little bumps are what's called the picots and they make kind of a delicate edge to the border. Uh, again, there's this contrasting white in the middle, but it doesn't have to be there. Uh, like I said, you can always play around with colors. And this one is really easy to do. Uh, all I do is to make the pico, I chain three. One, two, three. And then I slip stitch into the first chain Make sure it's the first chain and not the single crochet. And then I keep single crocheting and I'm gonna, so don't skip a stitch. And I do three single crochets, one, two, three. And then make another picot. So chain three, one, two, three. Slip stitch into that first chain and uh, single crochet three again. Now there's a, a lot of versatility in this particular border as well. My picots are made out of chain threes. If you want a bigger pico, chain more. You could chain five and then make them bigger. You can play around with the spacing in between here. I happen to single crochet three. If you want them closer together, single crochet two. If you want them further apart, try four. So you can experiment a lot and sort of take a look. I always find that doing something like a pico border, I have to do it a number of ways right on my actual work to see what looks best. Um, I actually made a sweater where this was the bottom edge border I used picots and I did it several different ways until I found the way that I like. So that's the pico border. Okay, and lastly we have a shell border. This in my opinion is very traditional. You see this a lot on um, baby blankets and clothing and things like that. And it's also very easy to do. What I've got here is a single crochet and then I'm going to skip a stitch and I'm going to do five double crochets in that stitch. So it's important that you skip a stitch because it accommodates all the double crochets. So you do five here. How many have I got so far? Four, five. All right, and then skip a stitch again and then single crochet. So the shell itself is made out of five double crochets and they're separated by single crochets in between. Again, you could uh, play around with this, space them further apart, uh, things like that. You'll see my white single crochet row in between. You don't have to have that, but that works um, if you just wanted a little bit of striping sort of in there as well. Okay, and here's another variation. What I've done is on top of these shells, I've just gone and single crocheted around them as well. And it kind of makes them a little bit more prominent uh, just because I've done it in a contrasting color. Uh, you know, just like eyeliner, whenever you outline something, it looks a little bit more prominent. I could have used the same color, which would have just made them bigger. Uh, and so it, that's just another sort of layer. It's just single crochets all the way around, nothing fancy, um, but that just gives it a slightly different look. All right, so that was five really easy borders that um, add a really nice finishing touch to any of your work. Uh, I hope you found this useful um, and I'll be working on part two, some more complicated borders, but I think this is a really good basis to start. So thanks for watching.